Hello everyone, it's your Peacekeeper coming at you with the next video in our How to Play series. And actually, this is our last video in the How to Play series on the German Destroyer line. This is German Destroyer 52. Z52, uh, Z the German Destroyer. This is actually the lead ship of the Type 1944 Destroyers which comprised of seven destroyers, numbers Z-52 through Z-58. Uh, the, the major design considerations here for Z-52 uh, basically was a continuation of what Z-46 and the Type 1934C class of destroyers would have been, uh, with the dual-purpose main armament, as well as the radar fire control and good AA. And then they took it and turn it into a diesel-powered uh, ship, which uh, up to this point, there had only been one other diesel-powered destroyer that the Germans really had built. That was uh, Z-51, Z-51, and that was kind of a prototype for this ship, um, for this whole class of ships. And of the ships, five of them were actually laid down at Bremen Naval Yard, A.G. Wieser, while two were ordered but never laid down from Germania Werft in Kiel. The rest of the ship is pretty much standard affair for German destroyers at the time, especially, you know, considering that this was a design advancement on Z-46 and that class. Even though Z-46 was never actually completed and Z-52 was never actually, you know, completed, basically the only major real difference aside from the diesel-powered nature of the ship was uh, changing over the mid-range AA to their 5.5 centimeter guns, uh, Gerrit. I have no idea how to say that. <laughs> Gerrit, I think is how that's said. Um, those were uh, very, very useful for the German Navy. They proved to be very useful uh, for any aircraft purposes, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, the only other major change is that we went from being the AXY gun layout to ABX layout, meaning we have two guns up front and one out back now. This is a more conventional gun layout um, compared to other destroyers. Um, you know, for instance, like the Japanese Navy was very heavy into the AXY layout where you had two guns out back like Z-46 had. Now, in terms of service history, there really isn't any, uh, because none of these ships were ever actually completed. The holes that were laid down were all scrapped uh, due to resource shortages. So, in terms of in-game playstyle, uh, this is the pinnacle of the German destroyer line, and the Z-52 boasts very long-range hydroacoustic search, and can nearly reach its detection range. The hydro runs out to 5.8k, uh, almost 5.9k, just shy of it, actually. Uh, that means that, and with a detection range of 6.1, that means that basically there's only about 200 meters of range at which, uh, you know, a ship can detect you and remain undetected by your hydro. And even with the 6.1 kilometer detection range, Z-52 is actually pretty stealthy herself, so um, really not a big deal to run out and... Uh, uh, you know, get yourself in up close and personal and get into some fights with you. Now, I will caution, even though you have the same powerful, quick-firing 128mm or 12.8cm guns uh, as the Z46 that packs brutally good AP, you do have to be careful in that early game when it comes to taking caps and contesting caps, so we'll talk about that more in the battle video. Uh, speaking of those 128mm uh, guns, I just feel obligated to point out that if it's exposing a broadside to you and it's thicker than, say, a Shimakaze, uh, expect that AP to fuse. So that means gearing, other Z-52s, Z-46, any of the, any of the German destroyers, uh, even Fletcher to a limited extent. Uh, it's going to take a lot of damage, and one of the matches I literally took off 10k off of a gearing in two salvos that's 5k a salvo and very impressive amount of damage especially when it comes to hunting destroyers combine that with the ability to smoke up and hydro uh, these ships can be quite brutal 
And one of the tactics that I really felt uh, was useful was as soon as you get a ship detected, as soon as they deployed smoke, deploying your own smoke when there's enemies around that can spot you makes it impossible for them to respond to you. And we'll see a little bit of that in the battle video. In terms of torpedoes, uh, they're a mild improvement over Z-46. They boast an additional two knots of speed and half a kilometer of range with no other changes. It's the same damage, it's the same detection, uh, it's the, the same reload, so you don't even take a penalty to reload to get the extra half kilometer and two knots of speed. That makes some very fast, very hard to avoid torpedoes. Combine that with 6.1 kilometer detection range uh, for the ship, and you can get pretty close to, to enemy ships and really nuke them. Uh, the only downside of the torpedoes is they don't tend to cause flooding, especially on battleships with halfway decent uh, torpedo damage systems. So don't expect, uh, you know, to get a whole lot of floodings on a, for instance, Yamato or an Alabama. Uh, this ship just flat just does not get floods on those ships. It just doesn't happen. Uh, the, the torpedo damage system is way too effective for it to actually get any damage. The downsides to this ship are exactly the same as Z-46, except for we take them and we make them a little bit worse. So Z-46 had pretty decent handling. Uh, Z-52s is going to be way worse. We add almost 40 meters of turning circle radius and about half a second to the rudder shift time. Um, so the ship really doesn't maneuver all that well, especially not in tight spaces. So you need to plan ahead all of your maneuvers if you can. Uh, be game planning in your head, you know, okay, if there's a destroyer here, I'm going to make this move right now and then make that move because chances are you're probably going to run into that destroyer right when you're thinking that. Uh, also, they, they, it does tend to take AP penetrating damage very easily. And so at the early game, you need to be very cautious about how aggressive you are when the enemy has adequate support from battleships or uh, other AP fairing ships because it will wreck your day overall z52 is an incredibly fun ship to play though uh ridiculously fun almost borderline overpowered in certain situations so let's look at the stats we got 23,800 hit points that's going to be with survivability expert on the captain up to 20 millimeters of armor the main battery consists of three dual 128 millimeter guns 12.1 kilometer firing range, 4 second reload, 10 second 180 degree turn time, 98 meter dispersion, 1500 shell damage, and 7% fire chance. I think that's going to be with the flags. Nope, not, nope, nope, that's base, okay? So, uh, 7% fire chance, that's alright, that's better than the US destroyers. 3000 AP shell damage, though, which just stacks up so easily. 830 meters per second uh, uh, velocity for both HE and AP. Torpedo tubes, you got two quad torpedo tubes. They have a 10.5K range, 69 knots, 14,400 damage, 1.4 kilometer detection range, and basically 69 second reload time. Anti-aircraft defense consists of seven dual 37 millimeter flax, uh, three single 55 millimeter gerates, Boy, somebody's going to correct me on that. And then, of course, your main battery is also dual purpose, um, the 128 millimeter guns. In terms of max speed, 39.4 knots with the speed flag. It's going to be, I think, 38 without, or 37 and a half without. 700 meter turning circle radius, 3.6 second rudder shift time. Detection range by sea, 6.1 kilometers. Detection range by air of 3.8 kilometers. In terms of upgrades, I am running Main Armaments Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the risk of your main battery and torpedo tubes being incapacitated, as well as a 50% increase in their hit points and a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair them. If you're out of detonation flags, you could run Magazine Mod 1 for the 70% reduction in the risk of your ship's magazine getting detonated. It's kind of like a free freebie, uh, you know... <laughs> a freebie debt flag. Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1, you know, the ship isn't very... I mean, the, the AA is usable, don't get me wrong, but it, it doesn't have defensive fire, so I really wouldn't recommend setting this up as an anti-aircraft destroyer. In the second slot, I am running Propulsion Systems Mod 1 for the 20% reduction in the risk of your engine being incapacitated, as well as a 20% reduction in the time it takes to repair the engine. 
Uh, I've noticed that this ship's engine gets taken out a lot. A lot more than its rudder, surprisingly. And I have a, a feeling that a large part of the reason for that is because the center of the ship has a lot of superstructure that's fairly easy to hit, while the rear of the ship really isn't. I, I, for that, I really wouldn't recommend running Steering Gears Mod 1 on the ship, because even with Last Stand on the Captain, I you just... I don't know, I, I hate losing my engine, it's the worst feeling in the world, and this ship goes so slow without having, um, you know, its engines intact. No reason to run Damage Control Systems Mod 1, though, so skip that. In the third slot, I am running Aiming Systems Mod 1 for the 7% reduction in the main battery dispersion, and at the 20% increase in the speed at which your torpedo tubes traverse. Now, there's really no other reason to run any other modifications here. AA Guns Mod 2, 20% extra firing range on your AA. And then Main Battery Mod 2, you know, ship's not a very strong anti-aircraft ship because it lacks defensive fire. And the, the turrets turn plenty quick. There's no reason to really take that. So that's why I take Aiming Systems Mod 1. In the fourth slot, I am taking and highly recommend Steering Gears Mod 2 for the 20% reduction in the rudder shift time. I, I pretty much consider this mandatory on this ship. There's not... Dealing with a, a four-second, four-plus-second uh, rudder shift time on this ship is particularly frustrating. Um, you really can't get this ship to turn very well because at low rudder angles, so when you're at, like, half rudder, the ship just doesn't want to change directions, ever. It takes forever to get this ship turned around. So the quicker we can get the steering gears working, the better. Um, in the fifth slot, I am running Concealment Systems Mod 1 for the 10% reduction in the detection range, as well as the 5% uh, increase in dispersion of shells fired at you. Nothing really else at this tier that I would recommend. Having 6.1 kilometers of detection range is extremely useful. And in the last slot, I am running Torpedo Tubes Mod 3 for the 15% reduction in the reload time of the torpedoes. This does come with the corresponding 50% increase in the chance of your torpedo tubes being incapacitated. However, um, the torpedo tubes really don't seem to get taken out that often, plus preventative maintenance, plus main armaments mod 1 tend to kind of cancel this out. So, uh, personally, torpedo tubes mod 3 is what I would run. However, I do know people that run main battery mod 3 for the 12% uh, reduction in the main battery load time. This, combined with basic firing training, turns this thing into a veritable machine gun. Um, that's great for gunboat builds, however, I have these set up very much for torpedo builds, because the torpedo builds, in my opinion, are a little bit stronger. And, let's face it, 69 seconds to reload 8 torpedoes is amazing. Uh, none of these other mods are really all that useful. I mean, I suppose if you were to try and run the ship as a full-on AA build, you probably could run AA Guns Mod 3. But beyond that, uh, the only other thing to talk about here is the Hydro. Again, 5.88 kilometers, basically 5.9 kilometer for detection range of ships. Uh, that's uh, that's Shimikaze, that's uh, Gearing, that's Yoyang and Chengmu. That's all those ships are covered in that 5.8 bit, well, basically 5.9 kilometer range. So uh, definitely useful, plus four kilometers for torpedo detection, which means when you are at those close ranges to those ships and you do uh, hydro them, uh, you don't have to worry about being surprised by torpedoes. So enough talking about this ship in port. Let's go look at it in a battle video. All right, so Z-52 being a tier 10 means you are always top tier. Uh, with that, there's some things to remember about being in a Tier 9, Tier 10, Tier 8, 9, and 10 match, and that's that Radar and Hydro are all over the place in these matches. In this match, we have Missouri and Baltimore are the only two that are most likely to have Radar. Only Minotaur is the only other ship that could have it uh, in this. Of course, Z-46 has Hydro, Kutusov has Hydro, Rune has Hard... Hi or sorry, Rune has Hydro, um, all, Bismarck has Hydro, Kerfers has Hydro, so there's a lot of hydroacoustic search going on in this. Um, most worried about the Baltimore, Missouri when it comes down to this. The map is the Atlantic, and everybody always seems to want to take these destroyers into the B-cap. <laughs> I say let them have the B-cap, personally. Uh, where, with where I'm spawned at, basically in the middle of the team, I'm going to run up north and help our Fletcher out as best I possibly can. 
I just think that's a, a much better idea than going down south um, or, or towards B. Uh, a cap on this map tends to take you out of the fight. All the fighting seems to happen around the B cap and C cap. Uh, especially at the early games, and with where I'm at, this actually puts me in a really good place to put some torpedoes down uh, along that corridor that most of the time you'll catch ships in between. It's that CD line area, about the 6-7 line on the mini-map, and once you start putting torpedoes down there, if they're coming to sea, man, it is very easy to get torpedo hits. Uh, so we're going to ignore B for the moment. We're going to go help our Fletcher, Dmitry Donskoy, and Richelieu, and go help them out as best we possibly can. Now this also puts us in an interesting position where if they end up going A, B, uh, any of the battleships that are supporting their destroyers at the B cap are going to be broadside to us if we manage to like make it through this channel up here and, and deal with all of that. So we've got HE loaded, um, still headed up towards this area, and the HE is not the most reliable damage dealer, but when it comes to dealing damage to ships that are angled, there really isn't a better option out there. So we're coming up on this channel here. We should start spotting some ships any minute now if they are coming towards the sea cap. So uh, just going to hang out, give ourselves plenty of avenue of escape. Okay, so we have Katusov there. Memphis Bell. You can see he's making a turn here, so as soon as we get through this, yeah, let's go ahead and we're going to pop down some torpedoes. Really surprised that the Baltimore did not uh, deploy his radar after being uh, spotted right away, but thankfully we've got this really handy-dandy island here to, to really help us out. Gearing there at 5.9k was really thinking about hanging around the southern island to try and continue to keep him spotted, but it doesn't seem to me like he's terribly keen on hiding at this point in time, so we'll just keep rolling through here. Um, oop, Fletcher just momentarily popped up. We're going to pop up our Hydro and see if we can't get others to shoot at him. Uh, this this is going to spook him. Oh, one torpedo hit, two torpedo hit, three torpedo hits. You can see only two floods out of that. So 22,460 damage done. Uh, that was done to, I think it's going to end up being the Baltimore. So at this point, we've got a Fletcher that's broadside. We had HE loaded, should definitely switch to, to the AP to uh, get him mostly with AP. He's angling quite a bit of ways, but look, 2300 damage. Okay, so now we're going to switch to the Katusov. we got a Baltimore that's coming through. Oh man, I'd love to be able to shoot at him, uh, but the... But the island is unfortunately in the way. Uh, so we're going to switch back to the Katusov as we switch back behind this island here. Look at the damage that just racks up. There's 2,400 damage. You know, we're taking light damage from that Fletcher that's shooting at us. Nothing real major there. Baltimore is... Well, <laughs> he ate my fine. He ate two torps for me to finally get the kill on him. So that's always a good sign. Katusov is there with next to no hit points. Deploying his smoke. Would be super nice. He, oh, okay, so we lost. We, he dropped off detection there. So one of the things I noticed is with this mini map, um, you know, we've got we've got some choices that we got to make. There is a grosser curve first there, which has hydro, has the same hydro that you have. Uh, so we should probably get out of dodge. We're gonna come up here and we're going to try as best we possibly can. Oh look, a Missouri. That's another thing to be cautious of. Uh, and we'll see that come to fruition. I'm sailing away uh, for obvious reasons. Sailing at the Missouri at point blank range is a bad idea and look you know the radar is up that means we're gonna most likely be shot at and those are the secondaries to the grosser curfer. So now while we're gonna go around this island here we are going to uh, <clears throat> eat some AP shell damage. Uh, but we are going to shoot at this grosser curve first while we do so. And now that we're behind the island, really don't need to worry about too much. Uh, yeah, oh darn, I'm detected, but good luck doing something about it, Missouri. <laughs> oh, man. Doesn't... Uh, I don't think we're going to get any hits out of that. Now, there's a couple different things that I could have done differently at this point, And that I kind of wish I would have done differently. 
Uh, Katusov over there, Mr. Memphis Bell, our dumb skoy, is trying to take him out. This Missouri is coming through, and I'm trying to think to myself, man, if I keep going around the backside of this island, that would be great. Uh, the Missouri is just hard charging it right now. Uh, he's starting to slow down a little bit. I think he's waiting for the Donskoy to come out. In hindsight, oh, nope, he's speeding up again. Now, in hindsight, I really would have loved, and I don't have torpedoes up quite yet, really should have just gone and uh, gone around the end of this island here to the north. It would have opened up some opportunities to this Missouri. I really thought he was backing up or that he would make a complete turnaround on this Donskoy. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll continue backing up in the hopes that maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to get some uh, get some torpedo hits on him. Uh, Donskoy launches his torpedoes, interestingly enough. Looking at our, our guns here, trying to see just how far back I need to go. And... Donskoy lands a torpedo. Now we're going to deploy our smoke and we're just going to engage. Um, like I said, I really thought the Missouri was going to come around the other way. And that would have been uh, so nice for him to do that. We are up to 43,318 damage. We got two kills yet here, but we're not done yet. This isn't the highest damage game in the world for a destroyer, but it is. Uh, it does demonstrate everything I wanted to demonstrate. So switching back to AP since he's kind of sort of starting to angle towards us. Indeed, not HE, not doing a whole lot of damage, but yeah, dollar short and a day late. So at that point, we got Fletcher headed back down there, taking some pot shots at a grosser curve first. I don't think we're really going to get much out of those shells. Yeah, we didn't even hit him. We were close. We do have Hydro. Now, this captain does have 18 points on him. Oh, gearing. Briefly spotted. And this is this is a, an engagement to pay attention to. So the gearing is there. He's engaging our Fletcher. He's exposing his broadside to me, which is great, by the way. Um, 3,600 damage. Hey, buddy. Well, 990. Okay, so the guns have stopped being reliable. And, well... <laughs> Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Some shells into the main turret there. And now he's got a problem because uh, <laughs> he can't see anybody and he is being hydroed. And he's got a Fletcher, he's got a Yugamo that are engaging him. And it wouldn't surprise me if this Richelieu gets involved. So he's starting to angle himself. We're going to switch to AP. Check out this damage roll. Yeah. Two grand. Now imagine had I been in a better position to where he was broadside to me. Gearing is one of those destroyers that is a lot like uh, Z-52 when it comes to eating AP pen damage. And uh, like I said in the first part of this video, um, I had a in, in a... in a match that I... while I was recording this, I had a gearing that smoked up at the end of a cap on. I think it was... Oh, I can't remember what the name of the map was. Anyway, it's one of those. Uh, it was the. It was one of the rank battle maps that had the two caps inside of each other. A sea of Fortune, I think, maybe. Anyway, on that map, uh, he he went broadside in his smoke. Which let, let's be honest here, we, we've all done the same thing. Uh, I know I have, and he uh, he was broadside. I I deployed my hydro. He couldn't see me. He had a Des Moines that was in the area, but I smoked up. The Des Moines didn't radar, and I just had to laugh because he was sitting broadside, and in two salvos, I did 10,000 damage to him and killed him. And it was kind of one of those things where you, you just couldn't help but laugh because he died so quick. Two salvos, literally two salvos. Oh, hey, look, a Fletcher and a broadside one at that. I mean, have we learned our lessons yet? I mean, seriously. Okay, so first damage roll was two grand. Second damage roll, uh, 2,300. And we're going to finish him off. So we are up to 71,000 damage at this point. We're going to deploy our smoke and shoot at this broadside Bismarck, because why not? Uh, you know, our AP is pretty good. I also deployed my... Uh, I deployed the speed boost because it does help you slow down some. Uh, at this point, we're not getting very good damage rolls on him because he's his superstructure might be saturated. Or, uh, oh, nope, there was a good hit. 
That was about two grand in a salvo. And, well, we don't really get the opportunity to do a whole lot more damage. And now we're down to two destroyers and a battleship. We've got two points and nearly triple the point lead. So, Mr. Habarovsk shows up. He is just gunboating away, doing gunboaty things, and, and you know, three quarters of his hit points left. Uh, now hovering about 60% of his hit points left. <laughs> Maybe a bit premature on the good game part, but three kills, 76,000 damage. What's left? Well, you see that there's two quad torpedo launcher groups there. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Haberovsk has uh, quintuple launchers, the five launchers, so that must be the Z-46. And we're going to uh, continue pressing on here. I think our Richelieu is going to uh, show this Haberovsk what he's not supposed to be doing. <laughs> there you see the Richelieu shooting. Not really paying attention to where the shots are falling, but oops. Dev struck him. <laughs> oh, man. So we've still got AP loaded because Z-46, let's face it, Z-46, yeah. And we're detected and we got Hydro rolling now because we are in a destroyer versus destroyer engagement. If he deploys the smoke, he's screwed. Um, but he is exposing that juicy, juicy broadside. We're just going to make these shells do some work for us. Well, 1,300 damage. Not really getting really great damage rolls here. Far better than the HE rolls, but we're bouncing his. Ooh, there was 2,200 damage. Uh, quick check to see if he was even going to turn away or not. Ha! <laughs> and we're going to switch back to AP and go back to HE. And I don't know what's going on. Well, we got the kill. <laughs> so that's the end of the match. A brief one. A bit of a steamroll, but you got to see how the Hydro works. You got to see how the AP works. You got to see how the torpedoes work. Uh, four kills, top of the team, 2,071 base XP, almost half a million, or over half a million in, in potential damage there. Uh, pretty solid game all the way around. Anyway, I really do enjoy Z-52. It's a fantastic little destroyer. Uh, just does everything well, and not a whole lot of downsides to it. Anyway, I'm your Peacekeeper. Like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching.